Hi there folks, today we're going to talk about the light reactions in photosynthesis and we're going to first focus on the path that electrons take as they travel through the membrane of the thylakoid and the energy level in those electrons uh, you can kind of think of as the shape of a letter Z and so we call this the Z scheme. So we're going to start off by looking at a leaf and the first thing we'll notice on a leaf like this are the veins and here we've got the main vein or the midrib and we've got branches that are coming off of this. So a little review um, this is one way we would know that this plant is a dicot. Uh, remember monocots have lines that are parallel and you can see here as well that these keep branching and branching and branching until they reach each individual cell. Now these veins include both xylem and phloem and we've talked a little bit about this before. Xylem is the tissue that's bringing water and other minerals up from the roots to the rest of the plant. So if we take a look at a leaf in cross-section, here's a scanning electron microscope image of a leaf in cross-section. And just to kind of get you oriented, up here is the surface of the leaf. This is the epidermis. And so we're essentially looking in on the leaf. And so this area right here would be the same as this area here on the leaf. We've got the lower, lower epidermis down here. These are the cells uh, that form the bottom margin of the leaf. There don't appear to be any stomata along here with guard cells, but this is where we would find them. Uh, this big structure uh, that's uh, false colored gray here, they color these scanning electron microscope images after the fact. This is one of the veins and it's very large. There's another smaller one over here on the side and probably what happened here is this cross-section went through something like this where this large vein is here and where they caught this one, that's over on this side. So those are just the veins, and those contain xylem and phloem. Now, the area that we're really interested in when it comes to photosynthesis is this area here, and we call that the mesophyll. And the mesophyll is separated into two separate sections. We've got an upper layer here that we call the palisade mesophyll and the palisade mesophyll is full of cells that are oriented in this vertical way you can see they're very long and narrow and these cells are full of chloroplasts an individual plant cell can vary in the number of chloroplasts that it has uh, anywhere from one to a hundred is the is the most that I've uh, read before and then we've got a lower layer of mesophyll here and this lower layer of mesophyll has many open spaces and for this reason it's called the spongy mesophyll. The spongy mesophyll has all these open spaces to allow the diffusion of gas. Carbon dioxide is going to be coming into the leaf along with air as well as oxygen which is going to be a waste product of photosynthesis that's going to be entering these spaces and then diffusing out. So both those processes are passive. Uh, they're both diffusion. That's carbon dioxide coming in and oxygen leaving. So let's take a look at a diagram of a leaf. And you can see the same structures we just looked at above. We've got our, uh, our upper mesophyll, uh, which is the palisade mesophyll, our spongy mesophyll. There's a vein. And we've got the epidermis. One thing that's shown on this diagram that we didn't see in our scanning electron microscope image is the cuticle. And the cuticle is a waxy layer that sits on the top of the upper epidermis. Let's move down now and take a look at a single chloroplast. So in these cells you can see these little green dots and these represent chloroplasts. The palisade mesophyll is where we see cells that have the most chloroplasts. So in this diagram we've got a chloroplast and let's kind of orient ourselves when we're looking at the chloroplast. There's a couple of things we want to note. Uh, the first is that there's one, two membranes and unlike in mitochondria, the double membrane really doesn't play any role in the function of the thylakoid, but it does do something else really important. It shows us the endosymbiotic origin of the chloroplast because this creature, this used to be a creature all on its own and through the process of endocytosis it was taken into a cell billions of years ago and that cell then was preserved and kept alive inside future plant cells. 
The structures that we are really interested in though are these. We've got the stroma, which is essentially the cytoplasm of this of the chloroplast. Okay, we've also got these stacks, and they look like little stacks of discs or pancakes. The stack is called a granum. That's singular, grana for plural. And the grana are made up of stacks of discs called thylakoids. And the thylakoids are where the real action or the business of photosynthesis is taking place. And so what we're going to do now is take a look at what's going on in the membrane of the thylakoid. So now we're going to look at this diagram which shows us the chemical reactions that are taking place that we call the light reactions. So let's kind of orient ourselves and figure out exactly where we are. Well, the, the first thing to appreciate is that we're in the membrane of the thylakoid and we've got two photosystems. Here's one right here and here's the second photosystem. So these photosystems are pigmented proteins. These little circles here, each of these represents uh, a molecule of pigment. Most of these will be chlorophyll. And so what's going to happen here is a photon of light, just a particle of light, is going to arrive at one of these pigments. It's going to hit one of these pigments and what happens at these pigments is the electrons that are hit by this photon are going to become excited. They're going to move to a higher energy level. They're going to move eventually to this reaction center. So they kind of actually bounce around until they eventually arrive at this reaction center. And what you'll see then is this arrow going way up doesn't represent the physical movement of electrons going up, but rather it is supposed to indicate the energy level. And, and you can see that here on this side of the diagram. Here's the energy level of the electrons in one of these photosystems. So essentially what we need to understand here is that in this photosystem, a photon of light is striking the photosystem two electrons are going to become excited. They're going to move to a higher energy level. And when they reach this particular part of the photosystem after bouncing around, they're going to move on to what we call the electron transport chain. And for our course, we don't need to know all the details of the electron transport chain. It starts here and it ends down here. And so this is very similar to what we saw in cellular respiration's electron transport chain. The electrons are going to be passed from the photosystem to several different proteins, which each have different jobs, but one of the most important jobs that's going to be happening here is the pumping of hydrogen ions. So you can kind of think of up here being outside of the thylakoid and down here being inside of the thylakoid. Hydrogen ions are going to get pumped from the outside to the inside using the, electro the energy in those two electrons. Remember, where did the extra energy come from? It came from the sun. So what's going to happen as those electrons are being passed down this chain and hydrogen ions are being pumped across the membrane is because that energy is being used to do work, it's going to be transferred and those electrons are going to lose energy and that's shown by these arrows going downwards. Eventually those same two electrons are going to arrive at the second photosystem and the same thing is going to happen. A photon of light is going to strike one of these pigments. The electrons are going to bounce around until they end up at the photosystem center at what we call I forget what this is called the reaction center. Here's our reaction center. Once they arrive at the reaction center, they're going to be passed off to a second electron transport chain. This one doesn't do any hydrogen ion pumping, but rather it sends the electrons down to an enzyme that's able to reduce an electron carrier called NADP plus down to NADPH. So that is the entire 
content that we need to know of the Z scheme in photosynthesis and the light reactions of photosynthesis. So let's just take a quick review here. First thing that happens is excited electrons are passed to the electron transport chain. They're going to lose energy as they go through the electron transport chain because that energy is being used to pump hydrogen ions from outside the thylakoid into the thylakoid. The electrons are then going to end up at a second photosystem where another photon of light is going to boost their energy level up and they're going to get passed through another short electron transport chain where they're used to reduce NADP plus down to NADPH. A couple of things to add in here. The first one, let me just get rid of uh, these blue lines here. The first thing that I want you to uh, appreciate here is where are the new electrons coming from? Because we just took two electrons from this photosystem. There must be energy, there must be electrons coming in to replace them. And those electrons are going to come from a molecule of water. So not only does the energy from light cause the electrons to become excited, it also splits a molecule of water. It splits it into two protons, it splits it into half of an oxygen molecule, and two electrons. So it's these two electrons that are going to replace the two that left this photosystem after it was struck by a photon of light. Now, the other thing that I want to mention here is what's going on uh, with the names of these photosystems. And it can be kind of confusing, understandably, because we've got the first photosystem that we encounter is called photosystem 2, and the second is called photosystem 1. The names are derived from the sequence in which the photosystems were discovered. So photosystem 1 was discovered first, and photosystem 2 was discovered second. The last thing is these numbers here, P700 and P680, refer to the wavelengths of light that these photosystems are best at absorbing. Both of these are close to the end of the visible spectrum. Remember the visible spectrum of light is between 700 and 400 nanometers, with this being more red and this being more blue or purple. So these photosystems are both specializing in absorbing photons with wavelengths that are close to 700, that being 680 and 700. So I hope that was useful. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about the Z scheme. And you can see now, if we follow the path of the electrons through the Z scheme, the, the shape that this takes is why we call this the Z scheme. Up, down, up, and down. Thanks very much, and I hope this helped out.